What is going on all you wonderful A plusers out there? It is I, Stuart here once again to give you guys another review of Common Rider. This time we're going to be taking a look at episode 2. Um one quick disclaimer I want to get out of the way real quick is that yes for the last episode I do feel like I was a little more lenient on that so you'll see me making a, a few complaints to this episode that were also relevant when it came to episode 1. Um that's again kind of comes down to the fact that it was my first Common Rider review and the fact that um Usually with first episodes, I tend to give a little more leeway just because um, it, it's always where they're trying to set everything up, get you ready for what you can really expect from the show. It's usually not until episode two of, of any show really altogether where you can really know what kind of show you're getting into essentially. So with that all being said, let's get right into this review because um, yeah, it, it picks up immediately where the last episode left off, which of course we all kind of figured. Uh, essentially, Rintaro shows up to the uh, to the bookstore riding on a CG blue tiger robot looking thing <laughs> um, essentially uh, he the reason for this is because he has heard that in Japanese culture it is considered rude to enter a building with your shoes on and I guess taking a tiger out was just a lot easier than taking his shoes off not gonna lie I actually got a good laugh out of this I thought this was actually a pretty funny explanation on why he had such a over dramatic entry friends but regardless, the scene continues with him introducing himself as Rintaro and then telling Toma that he needs his Wonder Ride book from him. Uh, Toma, of course, doesn't want to give it up because there's a lot of sentimental value to that. But of course, uh, Rintaro tries to be super nice about it, saying, you know, maybe I wasn't clear, but um, this is the fate of the world that we're talking about. The longer you hold on to this, the more danger that you're going to be uh, put into. Uh, but of course, this isn't enough to, to like convince Toma, so Rintaro then thinks that the easiest way to convince him would be to take him to his base of operations, uh, the base that belongs to the, the uh, guild that he's a part of, which is known as the Sword of Logos. Um, so he opens up a Wonder Ride book, uh, opens up a portal with it, and uses it to teleport both him and, uh, and Toma to the North Pole, which happens to be where their base of operations is located. Uh, we're then introduced to our theme song, and, um, I gotta be honest, I wasn't really a fan of the music that went into it. Now, a lot of times when it comes to tokusatsu's um, theme songs, tend to generally don't really connect with me immediately. Uh, usually, it takes like a few episodes for them to grow on me. Uh, it happened with uh, with Zero One, Go Kaiger, and even Q Ranger. I wasn't really the biggest fan of in the first two episodes, but you know, I feel like at least three or four episodes in, these songs all tend to grow on me. However, I don't see that happening with this theme song. This theme song was just not my favorite, uh, I, I'm sad to say. Uh, but I, the reason I chose this image in particular to bring up is because one thing I thought was odd, and this isn't like a critique on the theme song or anything, it's just something interesting that I noticed about it, is that usually when it comes to a lot more Western shows, that's when you tend to get the theme songs that will have someone uh, doing uh, something plot related to the music video of said theme song, and then suddenly acknowledging that there's a camera there, so then they stop look at the camera and say hi um I haven't noticed this at all ever happening in any of the tokusatsu shows that I've watched all together and I've watched a good amount at this point usually it's always one or the other it's either them doing a task or it's them looking at the camera um so it was kind of funny to see this happening here because you know it, it's essentially you get uh, Rintaro you know working on at the library then like putting books away and then acknowledging that there's a camera there you get this exact thing with the other two characters as, as well and and like I said this might be a more common thing than I realize. I've just known this to be a mostly Western thing for uh, people to do when it comes to television openings, but uh, I don't know. If, if I'm wrong, definitely let me know in the comments below and, you know, kind of, uh, if you have an example, definitely uh, send me a link to an example of a theme song that has this exact th same thing that's like a tokusatsu. Uh, but anyways, uh, back to like the actual review. When we get to the base of operations, we're introduced to a new character uh, called Sophia. Sophia seems to be a member of the guild, possibly a leader as she kind of comes off, uh, but doesn't seem to actually be a common writer. Um, she definitely reminds me personally of uh, Princess Shayla from Power Rangers Wild Force. Um, I, and I do not promise that that will be the last Power Rangers reference I make. I'm probably going to fit a few more in whenever I can, if I'm being honest. Um, but essentially, we get a little more exposition here. Um, the 
uh, essentially we find out that our main villain, his uh, name is Caliber, which awesome name, by the way. Uh, and we find out that his whole thing is that he is rewriting reality with the Wonder Ride books uh, in order to gain more power. Uh, that's currently all we know about him so far. But when it comes to Common Rider, very often villains are very rarely two dimensional. There's always kind of like a purpose bar behind their uh, their you know tasks or whatever. So I, I will I assume later on we're gonna find out a little more about uh, about uh, Caliber and you know why he's doing what he's doing and more than likely like even some of the henchmen will probably end up becoming good guys by the end of the series who knows um, but yeah it is uh, I do got to also give a lot of credit for the costume design for Caliber I mean the common writer designs in the season overall have been really impressive to me uh, normally I don't like designs when they're way too busy but in this show I think they really make it work uh, and especially that especially goes to this uh, main villain here um, we then get like a weird transition scene because we're suddenly back to the city where we get like some exposition on how like some of the city has been once again teleported to the fantasy world and they have to go and save it. But this has to have happened off screen because we don't see this happening. Yeah, we get a moment with the villains in the base in their base of operations and we see the creepy hands on the string writing in the book and everything. So we know this is happening because of the villains, but we don't like see like physically the city being teleported or anything like that. So I thought that was kind of a weird uh, transition, especially because all they would have really needed to do is use stock footage. Um, we also have some very familiar music playing in this scene. I'm not sure if it was just me, but the song playing in the scene uh, sounds exactly like the Song of Storms from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, I'm not sure if it was just a coincidence or if it is the same song, but seriously, if you guys have a chance to watch this episode, pay attention to the music in this scene. It's the same exact song. Uh, the only reason I'm not playing it now is because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but holy crap, it's basically the same song. Um, anyways, uh, Rintaro transforms into Kamen Rider Blade, and we get to finally see in full costume and yes much like with the other two designs that we've seen of uh saber and caliber blade looks really freaking awesome as well um a lot of people this was something i should have brought up in my previous review a lot of people have been complaining about the transformation sequence because it's using stock footage as opposed to happening on set like they usually do um this is coming from someone who's a power rangers fan I personally don't mind it. I think, yeah, it's uh, definitely a lot more cost saving to, to use stock footage. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing as long as that money that they're using to not, you know, transform on set is being used for other things. However, with that being said, if you are a common writer fan and this is something that does upset you, I'm not saying you're wrong to be upset about that. You know, it definitely makes sense. Uh, again, Again, I'm kind of new to Common Rider currently. Like this is only the fifth uh, season I've watched, you know, compared to the uh, do the dozens that are out there. So I don't, you know. So for me personally, it doesn't bug me. But at the same time, uh, I'm not saying like it shouldn't bug you too. If it bugs you, um, that's just how it is. You know, it's something. You know, you know, you can't help what irritates you about uh, a certain show or not. So yeah, it, it's just uh, I just want it to be known that for me personally, I don't mind the use of uh, stock footage. We then, of course, get Toma uh, transforming into his common Rider, and what follows is a really cool fight scene with the two of them, although nothing mind-blowing. Like, again, it's stuff that we've seen done, um, you know, in common Rider before, nothing like above average, nothing like below average, it's all just a really good solid fight scene, nothing wrong with that. Um, we then have the two of them retreat because uh, May decided that she really wanted to tag along and big shock she ends up getting injured in the process. Now the first episode I was not annoyed with her character, in fact I actually kind of enjoyed her, but it seems the way they wrote her in this episode, it seems they really want her to be that character that constantly gets in the way because of because she's constantly curious, and I really hope they don't write her that way for the rest of the series, uh, mostly because it's just something that's way too overdone now and just, and I'm not just talking about in Common Writer, I'm talking about in every show ever, you know, there's always that character that gets in the way because they have to be involved 
but then they end up just putting everyone in danger because then suddenly people have to worry about protecting that person while also trying to protect the city. I really hope that's not the direction they take with her character, um, but you know, we'll have to see going on. Meanwhile, as they retreat to the base of operations, Sophia and Toma have a discourse over whether or not they should continue to fight or maybe just stop a minute to re-strategize. Uh, her argument being that, of course, it's a little bit too dangerous and there's a difference between uh, bravery and recklessness. But uh, Toma's argument, of course, is uh, the fact that the longer the wait they wait, the longer they risk the effects being permanent. Uh, so he wants to take action now and in doing so, he unlocks a new power-up. This a power up is of course a motorcycle because it's common rider. So what else would a power up in a uh, common rider be? Uh, so the two of them head back and we get another uh, morph seat. Wow, I said more. Sorry, I meant to say transformation sequence between the two of them as they uh, transform into their common rider outfits. And then we get to where I kind of mentioned in the beginning of this review where I was really going to be picking apart this episode. I am not a fan of this computer animation. Now, in the first episode, I wasn't very mad about it because it didn't last for very long, and for the most part, it seemed very fluid. Now, I'm not saying it looked real. It didn't. It looked like, uh, I think every fan has pointed this out, it looked like something that belonged to a PlayStation 2 uh, CGI cutscene. Um, but at the same time, I was kind of lenient on it, until we get to this episode and this is where i'm afraid to say the gloves are off i'm not pulling any of my punches here it's really bad um and, and not the environments themselves the environments look fine and in fact i'll even say that the uh ant bug things that are coming after them are also not that bad either again they look fake but um the way they're utilized i think works very well what doesn't work, however, are the common Riders themselves, you know, kind of the most important aspect of the fight scene. They try to mi use a mixture of both uh, people in suits in front of a green screen and fully CGI'd common Riders, um, and they try to mix the two of them, and unfortunately, it doesn't work. When it's guys in front of a green screen, because of how fake the background looks, it's way too obvious that it's just people in front of a green screen, um, and when it is fully CGI'd common and writers uh, unfortunately the animation is very stiff um, it reminded me in fact I don't know if anyone has played Final Fantasy 7 but in that game there's a mini game where you play as cloud on a motorcycle and you're supposed to be taking down enemies as they come up to you left or right you know and keep in mind this is PlayStation 1 the fact that I'm thinking of that scene when watching uh, this scene from Common Rider really shows how kind of stiff the animation is because that wasn't even a cutscene. That was like gameplay from Final Fantasy VII. And that's what this scene looks like. It looks like gameplay from a PlayStation 1 game and not because like the, the graphics look that bad, but because of how stiff the animation is. Like um, if you're going to go with the more watered down CG, Personally, I don't think there's any excuse for stiff animation if this is the direction that they're going in. Uh, we've seen many times kids shows with uh, complete CG effects. They may not look very good, but oftentimes they're at least fluid. And if like, let's say a budget is an issue, maybe they can't get the budget to fully animate these scenes, then probably animating them wasn't a real good idea to begin with. Um, you know, I, I give them props for trying something new. Uh, and it's just, it's too bad to say that I just don't think it worked out in the best here. Um, I really hope the CG improves later on, but for now, not only does it not look realistic at all, but the animation is way too stiff and it takes me out of the action way more than I would like to admit. Uh, so, you know, I really hope, again, this is something I really hope improves later on, but for now is kind of a huge letdown if I'm being honest. Um, I just realized, I think I skipped an image here, but essentially the, uh, the two common writers do end up saving the day at the very end and they go back to the bookstore to kind of like touch base on everything. Essentially, uh, Telma decides that he is going to fully take up being a common writer. May says that she wants to continue to, uh, tag along on all of their adventures. But of course, Rintaro is very hesitant on this saying that, yeah, it would only be putting her in danger. And I think the real reason is because you know he's too polite to admit it but she would just be getting in the way um 
But then we get one last stinger at the end of this episode, which I thought was kind of cool. We get someone coming into the store on a floating carpet, uh, claiming that he recognizes Toma, that they, you know, used to know each other. But we cut to Toma, and he does not seem to recognize this guy at all. Um, so guys, yeah, overall... I'm not going to try to say that this was a bad episode, it wasn't, but it was definitely kind of a bit of a letdown. I, you know, was, a, like I said, I was a lot, um, I was a lot nicer when it came to my review of the first episode, because again, first episodes tend to be, you know, they're trying to figure out what kind of show they really want to be, but by the second episode, you're kind of expecting they figured that out, the format should be there, what you can expect for the rest of the series, and unfortunately, if this is the format we can expect, it's, uh, it doesn't get me too excited for what we can expect for the future of, uh, common rider saber but with all that being said things could change later on uh we see in every common rider series ever usually after every like 10 15 episodes things tend to change um whether or not it's because of reviews or ratings uh but you know there's always something that really seems to change the status quo of you know what we can expect from future episodes so hopefully that happens with saber um i really hope they don't overuse these cgi fight scenes because currently or Maybe if they do end up using more of them later on, I hope they get better at them because currently they're not very good and I really hope we don't have a full like 45 episodes where like half the fight scenes are CGI. Um, but you know, with that being said, the regular in suit fight scenes were also really good and uh, the characters in the show are what's kind of been intriguing me the most. I really do like Toma so far. And of course, I'm very curious to learn a lot more about Rintaro since he seems to be this big fish out of water that doesn't really know much about the real world as he spent most of his time probably in the North Pole trying to protect all of reality from the fantasy world. So it'll be kind of cool to get more insight on his character. And of course, to learn a little bit more about Sophia. I really hope we'd get a female common writer again this season like we had previous season, but uh, I'm not going to cross my fingers or get my hopes too high up, but it is something that I would genuinely like to see, whether or not it ends up being Sophia or May or some new character that get, gets introduced later on. Um, it is going to be kind of cool to see where the show goes. So, you know, obviously I'm going to keep watching it until the very end, but I am going to not going to lie when I say that something is kind of disappointing. And in this case, yeah, it, this wasn't as good of a second episode as I was hoping for, but you know, I'm still optimistic about the show. Let me just say that though. I still think there is a lot of room for improvement, but I do think this is the type of show that can, you know, improve over time. And I really hope to see that. Uh, but at the end of the day though, guys, these are just my A plus opinions. We here at A plus opinions always want to know what you guys think. So definitely let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this episode more than I did, definitely let me know and let me know why. Also, definitely hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. But above all, guys, just remember to keep it A+.